Hey, hello and welcome back to the channel. We have part two of our uh, Google Maps video. In this video, we're going to add markers to the screen. We're going to add info windows to them. And we're also going to show you how to dynamically add markers to your map. All right, get ready for the code. Please make sure you click the like and subscribe button and uh, enjoy the content. Thanks. Okay, let's get to the code. So we're inside of the home view. And um, let's cr create our setup because we're going to have to add a, um, a variable property uh, to hold our markers. I have some predefined markers that I'm going to add. I got the lat long. I think it's the, um, what do we have here first? It is, I think, Union Station and the White House are the two locations that we're going to add by default. So this first one's Union Station. And so for our markers, we need the lat, we need the long, and we need a title. We're going to use the title in the info window that is displayed. So let's uh, make a copy of that first one and then fill out the information for the next one. So let's change the values for the Latin along for the White House. Um, I don't know these by heart. We're cutting and pasting these, obviously. And we'll get those set in there. I mean, later on, we're going to show how to dynamically add them. But for now, we're just going to hard code some values for our marker. All right, so we have our marker set. And then now let's go to our um, component that we've created. And we need to create a new property called markers. And this is how we're going to pass the markers in. Um, and uh, we need to make sure we return it from our setup so that we have access to these values in our template. OK, so now it looks like we're set up in our home. We have our property assigned. Let's go to our map component. OK, and now in our map component, let's add our new property, markers. And it's a type array. And then let's go down and let's see how we're going to use this thing. So let's create a function called load map markers because later on we're going to be able we're going to eh, later on we're going to need to be able to load markers multiple times. So when the properties change, we'll have to reload the markers. So that's why we separated out into a function and did not include it directly in the init map function. Okay. So before we load the markers, we're going to make sure we actually have some markers. So we're going to check the length of the marker array. And if there is nothing, then we're just going to get out of there because clearly there's no markers to add. If there are some, then what we need to do is we need to loop through each one to add them. So um, we're going to have the props marker for each. And then the for each will provide us the actual element, which we'll probably define as a map, something that makes more sense, map marker. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a Google function to actually create a Google Maps map marker. And we're going to pull the properties from the from the marker info um, to construct the uh, Google map marker. OK, so we set up this constant that's going to hold it. And then remember, our Google object is hanging off the window. So we say new window Google Maps dot marker. And then we pass in the uh, required properties, which clearly is a position. And position is the lat long. And we need to create a new Google lat long with that. So once again, the window Google Maps lat long. We'll create the object that needs to get passed in. So we get our marker info and the lat, and, and then the marker info, and then the long, long and lang, LNG, whatever you want to call it. And that will create our position. OK. And then you need the map. And remember, since we're using this reference, it's the map.value that you want. And then for the title, we're going to take the um, property off the marker object we created called title. And we'll pass that in. So now we have our marker created. Let's. We have a couple of errors here. Uh, looks like it looks like I'm calling load marker before I defined it. And then it looks like I had an old um, import that wasn't needed. So let's move our load. What is it saying? Um, we're calling our, yeah, we're calling map markers in the init and we haven't defined it yet. So let's switch the order, put the window init map at the end of my setup and the load markers at the top. And then what do we got left? Map markers designed value but is never used all right um for now since we're not really doing with anything let's just we're not really doing anything with the map marker um so we can remove that uh, constant 
and just create the objects and add them to the map. And then the marker is not defined. Oh, it's marker info, not marker. Um, let's clean this up a bit. I'll fix this error later. Um, I think we just need a hard reload to get this thing going. Let's try that. Okay, reload. Voila. And we have our markers appearing. But we don't actually have the titles showing anywhere. So we just now we have the um, markers actually appearing on the map, which is what we wanted. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll add the info window. So when you actually click on them, you see the little info pop up that you're used to seeing. Okay, so let's go back to our map component and put a little comment in here so that we know what we're doing. This first part puts the marker on the map and then we will, let's clean that up a bit. Because, because what it is is as we're looping through the markers, there's two steps. The first step is to put the marker on the map, and then the next step is to create the info window that's associated with the marker. So that's the next comment that we had is the info window. Okay. And now because we need um, the info window, we actually need the marker object. I mean the map marker. So that's why let's bring back the constant map marker, and then we'll have a concept called info window, and then there'll be a new info window that's created. Once again, using new google.maps. Uh, info window. We'll create a new info window. An info window for what we're doing with it right now is pretty straightforward. Um, it just has content and we are passing the content in. The content we're providing is um, what we set on the marker as the title and that will be passed in and that will be the content for the window that will appear when you click on it. Okay, so now we created a new info window and then what we need to do is we need to add a listener for each marker so when the marker is clicked that it knows to render an info window. So we take the map marker that we created, we add a listener to it, we listen for the click event. When we get the event, we check and see. I mean, I could, you can, there's a bunch more things you can do with the event because the event that you get back tells you what type of event it is, but we're not gonna go into that right now. So we're just gonna say, if a marker got clicked, then if the marker has a title, then we're going to assume that since you have a title, you have an info window, and we're going to show the info window. So that's the map marker title is not equal equal uh, map marker title does not equal null. Since the map marker title does not equal null. Oh yeah, that's a better way to do it. We're going to associate the info, we're going to add the info window to the map marker object so that we have it when we need it. So so now, since we've assigned the info window to the map marker, once we the map marker gets clicked, as I'm realizing, as I'm typing this, I probably could have done it another way, but this is this is clearer. The map marker, we take the info window on the map marker and we open it. And we open it and we give it the map value that it um, that's associated with it and the map marker. We pass into the info window open. Now let's see what the errors we have. Marker is not defined, Google is not defined. So I don't need the event, so I can remove it from there. Next up, Google is not defined. I need to add the window object. So that solves that. And then marker is not defined. It's not called marker. It is called marker info. So let's change that to marker info. Let's compile. And let's see what we get. OK, click on get my White House. Yay. I get my Union Station. Yay. So things are working as we expected them to work. We've shown our markers and now our markers appear and we have info windows that can show with that. Let's, um, just to let you know, you can add um, HTML uh, to your info window. So we're just gonna change our titles to, we're gonna put a strong, put them inside a strong element so that they can show up as bold. And we'll show you how that looks. Okay, now they are, everything showing up as bold. Okay. Let's move on to something else cool we want to do here. What we're going to do here now is we are going to show you how you can dynamically add additional markers to your map. And to do that, we need a reactive variable. So we're going to change markers to be a reactive variable. So what will happen is as we modify the markers array, it will be reactive, which will force the view to re-render. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, create a button and when you click the button, 
what will happen is that the button will add a predefined location to our markers array. The markers array, because it's reactive, will force the Google Map component to re-render as it gets the new property with the new marker. Um, and then we will need the component to have some way to recognize that it, its properties have been updated and re-render itself. But we'll get to that when we get back to the Google Map. So here we've added this button. We had a function called add location. Just to make it look cleaner, we've set the button size to small. Um, so now let's add the add location function. Okay. We need to make sure we return it from our setup so you have access to the function inside the template. Um, we adding our function, no property since we're going to use our local uh, variables, which contains the marker. Let's add a nice comment so we all know what's going on. Okay, I know how to type. It's late, but I still think I can pull it off. Okay, what's it complaining about? Empty arrow function. Okay, that makes sense. Let's put something in there. Uh, maybe getting a little crazy with the comments, but it never can hurt. So let's add our new markers array. So remember, since we're using a reference, we have to say markers.value. And what we're going to do to make sure that the object, to make sure that we're creating a new object, because if we don't create a new object, it won't re-render. So we are going to destructure all the values that currently exist in the array. And then we're going to take my new predefined object. And since we're in Washington, we're going with uh, Nationals Park. So I Google this because once again, I don't know these at the top, off the top of my head. So I've Googled a lot long for Nationals Park here in Washington, D.C. Um, we're going to set the necessary properties, which are the lat, the long, and then a title. And to stay consistent, we will add the strong element to it. So our national spark will be bold. And so now when we click add location, it will um, create a new markers value object that has an additional uh, marker in it, uh, which is nationals park. And as you can see, uh, we're getting our usual errors. What did I not import? I did not import. Is it ionic button? So let's add my ion button to my imports. Ion button is not defined. So I added to my imports. I need to add it to my components. That should make that error go away. Let's see what we get now. So error's all gone. Everybody's happy inside of my home component. Now let's, I think it's time to switch over to my Google Map component. But yeah, let's just console log so we can see that my markers are actually getting updated. So add location, all right. We can look at the reference. I know it's kind of small in the video, but you can see that uh, we now have an array of three objects, which indicates that my data is actually getting added to my markers array. So I know my add location function is working. My markers reference is getting updated and uh, that's what we need. So um, let's clean that up. We don't leave that lying around and let's now switch over to my component. So as I said, what we need to know is we need to be able to recognize that the um, uh, property has changed, but because we're going to add markers all over again, we need to be able, we need a function to clear all the markers that are currently on the map off the map. And there might be a better way to be more efficient to identify what markers are there and only add the new markers, but let's keep this um, initial demo video here simple. And what we're gonna do is every time a new set of markers get passed in, we will clear all the markers off the map and add new markers. And so to clear all the markers off the map, that means we need to keep track of what markers are on there. So as you can see, I've introduced a new variable called current markers. And what I'm gonna do is in load markers, I will add all the markers into current markers and keep that property around. And then this new function clear markers, when it's called, it will loop through all the current markers, set the map that was associated to marker to null, which will remove it. And then we'll clear the current markers array with, okay. So now let's go into load markers. And you'll see here in, um, in load markers, every time you call load markers, we will always call the clear markers. And if clear markers is empty, which it'll be the first time, it won't do anything. So it's safe to call it. But if there, if map, if if markers are already on the map, clear markers will clear them all off before we um, iterate back to the markers property to add new ones. So since current markers is a new property, you can see I at the end of my props marker for loop, I need to add all the markers to the current markers array. So now I have a local copy of all the markers that I've added to the map. And that will be what I clear when I call clear markers. If that's not clear, pause the video, go back through it again. Okay. So what have I got to do now? So let's add my local property markers. 
my current markers. Notice it's not a ref. I don't need to be dynamic. I don't need to do anything special. I just need a place to keep all the markers that I put on the map. So I've added it there. And then now, this is the interesting, I need to watch the um, markers property to see when it's changed. And if it's changed, I don't care what it's changed to. I just want to clear all the markers off the map and call load markers all over again. Um, so once, like I said, once again, in the demo, I'm just trying to keep it simple, nothing special. We're just going to brute force it. So we're using the um, view three watch property. So basically what we're saying is watch the property markers. If the property markers changes, then let's take some specific action. And the specific action that we're going to do is we are going to load the map markers. And we don't need to worry because the first thing load map markers does is clear all the markers that are on the map. Um, I've commented out the two um, variables that you get passed in normally. You get past an old and a new, um, which there, like I said, I probably could diff them and only add the, the uh, new markers to the map. But this time around, I just wanted to keep it simple. So we watch the property. If it changed, we call load map markers. Load map markers will clear the map and load the new ones on. Okay. So that looks like that's all good. Okay, so you can see I just clicked the map. My new marker for Nationals Park got added. All my other markers are working as I expect them to do. Um, refresh the map, add it again. So um, it looks like things are working as we expected to do. One last thing is we can take a look at all of our variables. You know, every for those folks who watch my videos, you know I like to show you view tools. So we can like dig down in and we can find our Google Maps component. You can see the markers that have been added. Um, you see there. Oh, I clicked it twice and so I clicked it twice and so you can see it added it twice to the um, my local markers array, um, which is not really what we wanted, and you can't tell the difference because they're stacked on top of each other, but Let's refresh the page and see if we can get everything to look correct. All right, so we refresh the page. We look at the map markers. We only have two items in there. Okay, that's what we should get. So I hope you like this video. Um, we have one more section that we have coming up where we're going to show how to leverage the Google library that's loaded to find the actual at long. And instead of adding some random um, location, we will add that location to the map and we will dynamically resize the map to make sure that all of the markers are rendered in the view. So uh, make sure you check back in to see that video. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.